Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have our national anthem sung by the combined choirs of the United States Naval Academy, the United States Air Force Academy, the United States Military Academy at West Point, the United States Coast Guard Academy, and accompanied by the United States Army Herald Trumpets. Michelle Alexander is an associate professor of law at Ohio State University. Her book is called The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness. Today there are more African Americans uh, under correctional control in prison or jail on probation or parole than were enslaved in 1850, a decade before the Civil War began. In fact, in major American cities today, more than half of working age African American men uh, either uh, are under correctional control or are branded felons and are thus subject to legalized discrimination for the rest of their life. This is something that now affects the overwhelming majority of African Americans in the United States. If not uh, them directly, then they often have a, a relative who's been affected by the system. After the war on drugs was declared, drug convictions uh, increased astronomically. In fact, uh, drug convictions have increased more than 1,000 percent since the drug war began, and many people assumed that the explosion in drug arrests and convictions were, was due to some kind of spike in drug use and abuse, but that's not actually the case. Um, one of the reasons that drug arrests have skyrocketed is because federal funding has flowed to state and local law enforcement agencies who boost the sheer numbers of drug arrests through the Edward Byrne Memorial Grant Program uh, and related funding streams. Um, state and local law enforcement agencies have been rewarded in cash by the millions for the sheer numbers of people swept into the system for drug offenses, um, thus giving law enforcement agencies an incentive to go out looking for the so-called low-hanging fruit, um, stopping, frisking, searching as many people as possible, pulling over as many cars uh, and trying to search them as possible in order to boost their numbers up and, 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 and ensure that uh, their funding stream will continue or increase. Oakland Riders police scandal had broken, turned out a gang of police officers, otherwise known as a drug task force, uh, known as the Oakland uh, Riders, had been planting drugs on suspects. And it was really at that moment that the light finally went on for me. And if these kinds of sweep tactics were employed on college campuses or directed towards middle-class high school students in suburban neighborhoods exiting from their school bus, um, there would be just incredible amount of outrage. <laughs> you know, the drug war would have ended a long, long time ago if these tactics had been employed uh, in middle-class or upper-middle-class white communities. Politicians face few repercussions for engaging in incredibly aggressive and counterproductive tactics. Um, my years of experience and the research that I have done has led me to the regrettable conclusion that our system of mass incarceration functions more like a caste system than a system of crime prevention or control. Now that's not to say that many of the people who work within it, including my own husband, who's a federal prosecutor, aren't well-intentioned. Um, many of them are. But the problem is that the structure of the system itself uh, guarantees that millions of people will be swept into the system for relatively minor crimes, the very sorts of crimes that are ignored on the other side of town, swept into the system, branded criminals and felons, and then stripped of the very right supposedly won in the civil rights movement. You know, it, it seems to me that it would not be in anybody's interest, including the people who dreamed up the war on drugs or who have advocated aggressive police tactics. It's certainly in none of those people's interest to have you know, huge numbers of African-American 
men keep them subjugated. You know, if we return to the rates of incarceration we had in the 1970s or the early 1980s before the war on drugs, we would have to release four out of five people who are in prison today. Four out of five. More than a million people employed by the criminal justice system would lose their jobs. Private prison companies listed on the New York Stock Exchange uh, would be forced to watch their profits vanish. Uh, this system of mass incarceration is now so deeply entrenched in our political, economic, and social structure that it is not simply going to fade away uh, without some kind of major shift in our public consciousness. How do you rate President Obama's performance? Oh, I've been very disappointed. Um, you know, I think that he's had numerous opportunities to speak boldly and forcefully about the harms of the drug war and the need for us to end mass incarceration as we know it. What we see is that in his drug policy budgets, uh, he has invested about the same ratio of dollars to enforcement um, as compared to prevention as the Bush administration did. So we haven't seen the change that I was hoping for in the Obama administration, although the rhetoric has changed. Um, Gil Kurlowski, the drug czar in the Obama administration, uh, has said publicly that he doesn't think we should call it a war on drugs anymore because we shouldn't be at war with our own people. But it's not enough just to change the rhetoric. Uh, we have to be willing to actually end the policies and practices that have proved so devastating um, over the past 40 years.